Hi, and welcome back to Gavin Sonics B. It's been about two weeks since the last video, and I've managed to do pretty much everything that I wanted to do. Um, in that, I've completely stripped the uh, front fuselage cockpit area completely to pieces, and have uh, up-drilled uh, holes where necessary. Everything's been deburred, um, checked everything, and uh, I'm ready to actually start assembling. So what I'm going to do is go through all the bits that I've got. Uh, I've got a. If I just show. There's the. Uh, there's the tail cone, detached again. And back on the table over here, we've got a pile of finished components um, all ready to be assembled. Um, some of them are little sub-assemblies in their own right. And uh, on the table here, we've got, if I can get this phone to work, whoops, it's going the wrong way. There we go. Um, we've got... Uh, the, one of the side panels, the other side panels over there, the uh, spar tunnel is in bits over there and the floor and firewall are behind that side panel. But anyway, we'll go, we'll go through all those bits and uh, what I've actually done to them. Um, everything's been breathed on in some way. So... Uh, here we go. So the first parts to look at are the side panels. And I'm going to use the left hand side panel. Uh, the right hand side panel is exactly the same, um, but varies only really in uh, a couple of small areas. Um, so what I've done to the side panels is dimpled the two main upright supports for the spar tunnel to attach to. Now if I have a piece of advice for you, the front one detaches because we haven't riveted it yet as per the instructions. So that was pretty easy to put into the pillar drill and uh, countersink all the holes so that we can put countersink rivets in the spar tunnel so that the rivets don't interfere with the spars as the wing spars as they go in. Um, however, as in accordance with the plans uh, or the, the drawings, I did um, rivet the aft support in place. And what I should have done really is countersunk these holes first which it doesn't tell you to do as far as i as far as i can tell um because uh, trying to uh, countersink them uh, attached to the side panel um is quite difficult um they're very this row is very close to the side and i had to use a right angle drill through the uh the opening to actually uh, get at them in, in some kind of uh, reasonable way. Um, it wasn't that difficult, but if I had my time over again, I would have countersunk those before um, actually riveting them on. So the front one is still detachable. It has to be for the wing rigging um, procedure. Um, but the front one, I've also uh, attached the bracket for the um, brake um, master cylinder. And I've also uh, drilled and uh, copper clecoed the um, bracket for the um, instrument panel on as well. Because doing this afterwards is going to be a pain in the arse um, because you're going to be working in a corner. Um, and it's going to be almost impossible to do. So I've done it all to start off with. So everything has been drilled out. The uh, 
The bottom longer on has been drilled and uh, drilled out to size and deburred. Everything's been deburred. The other thing I did was to drill out the holes for the seat belts. Um, they have to be drilled out now really because you're not going to be able to get at them once um, everything is assembled or at least it's going to be very difficult. Um, and that's about it. The the longer ons have been pre-drilled um, in situ when the entire thing was assembled for the bolt holes. Um, what else can I tell you? Uh, these um, brackets for the engine frame are all drilled out for bolt size and the bolts have been fitted where we can. The top longer on cannot be fixed in place at the moment. So that's still clee code on the other side. In fact, it's silver clee code most of the way um, because uh, we've got to be able to take it off in order to drill um, the fixings for the glare shield and also um, for the canopy um, hinge and uh, opening fixings etc which we haven't done yet um, and can't do until the the cockpit's assembled uh, so that's where we are with that um, it's all uh, deburred and um, and looking good the right hand one is exactly the same um, bar the bracket for the um, brake master cylinder um, so that's what I've done with the side panels and they're looking nice um, and now we'll go on to the next parts the spa tunnel comprises of two sub assemblies we've got the aft spa tunnel and the forward spa tunnel Z it's called a Z because it's basically a piece of sheet aluminium bent into a Z shape. That's a British Z, not an American Z. <laughs> and uh, the, uh, the trickiest part of it really is, um, particularly with the aft uh, tunnel assembly is that uh, you've got a countersink and dimple a lot of holes the main aluminium angle that goes across the top of the aft one has a hundred and two holes in it each one requires a countersink rivet and the reason that we use countersink rivets on this is that the spar is going to slide in against this surface and nothing must protrude otherwise it'll get stuck and that wouldn't be good so the first thing i did was to countersink the uh, the upper uh, angle and to do that, I used this trusty 120 degree countersink bit in my pillar drill. And once you've actually countersunk them, they look a little bit like this. Now to gauge how deep to countersink them, um, I used part of my dimple die. So the dimple die is for dimpling the sheet metal to fit into the countersink. So what I did was I took the two halves apart and the part that actually has the, the protruding countersink sticking out of it, I used to check my I've got to now do this. I need three hands for this. I haven't got them. Hold on. 
Right, there we go. So each of the holes I uh, countersunk until the dimple die half went into the countersink and sat perfectly flat. And in fact, because we're looking for a smooth entry and exit for our spars in and out of here, we don't want the um, rivets to protrude, but we don't mind if they're slightly, and I do use the word slightly, slightly recessed. And so what I've done is I've gone down to where it's actually flat and then just a shade more. And if I wiggle my finger, there's a tiny little bit of play in there so that I know that when I pull the uh, sheet into that using the dimple die, then uh, the rivet is going to be just a few thou below the surface of the uh, sheet. So that's what I did there. Um, rather than using both halves of the dimple die, I actually uh, dimpled the sheet into the countersunk material. So wherever I had a, uh, a dimpled part, and this is the wrong one that I've got in my hand, but anyway, um, I literally put the um, part uh, underneath with the countersinks in it and then I pulled the dimple die through the sheet into the um, aluminium extrusion using the trusty hand riveter. And uh, to achieve that, I used uh, these steel nails, which pass the 2.7 millimeters, I think. They pass straight through the middle of the dimple die with a little tiny bit of clearance. And uh, then uh, through all the material and then into the rivet gun and then pull the rivet, the, the dimple die into all the material and that worked extremely well i had the uh, sheet clicoed to the part first and then pulled through um, and i uh, must say they've all come out really well and i've got almost no distortion of the um, sheet material at all um, it may not look like that because i've got a very wide angle lens on here which was making everything look distorted but Take it from me, uh, everything's perfectly flat and not one of the 97 rivets I've put in across the top here so far, 98, um, not one of them is proud. They're all just a fraction, a few thou um, below the surface of the aluminium sheet. So that worked really well. Um, one thing to bear in mind, when you go and get your uh, trusty steel nails to pull with, um, you get about 10 dimples from one nail. And the nail will stretch over those 10 dimples and then snap and try and break your fingers off. Um, so I basically was doing eight dimples, then changing the nail. So I had a bag of 50 nails uh, to, to use. <laughs> the first time it happened, um, uh, I crushed my finger in the uh, in the rivet gun, and uh, so uh, <laughs> decided that <laughs> discretion was the better part of valor, and I'd only pull about eight at a time, and that worked um, re really well. Um, so I've done the same with the um, all the other parts; they were all countersunk. And then I've pulled the dimples through the part um, so that they all fit absolutely perfectly. And it's come out really well. Really pleased with it. Looks the you know looks right. 
Um, I've also drilled out the three holes here to, um, I think I went out to about 20 millimeters. That's to allow to get a socket um, for a quarter inch bolt, uh, which is a half inch socket, um, through the hole in order to um, secure the wings together, uh, the, well, the two um, wing roots together when doing the uh, wing rigging procedure. So I've done that on the, on the Ford Z and the aft tunnel assembly. Um, and uh, everything's dimpled, ready to go. And uh, so that's the, the tunnel. Next, at the front here, we've got two little assemblies. The, uh, the one on the left here is the seat belt or the center seat belt attach assembly. And uh, basically that's uh, all riveted and bolted together as a little assembly in its own right. Um, and uh, has been drilled out for the bolts for the seat belt. And then on the right, this is the elevator idler assembly, um, which is a little sub-assembly in its own right. And the idler does this sort of business. Um, and that's all drilled, ready to put into place. Behind it, these two long pieces, we've got the upper cross tie, which is right behind the firewall at the front of the um, cockpit and goes from uh, one side to the other. And the bottom cross tie, which runs across the bottom of the front of the Ford fuselage. And then the floor and firewall stiffeners which um, I have assembled into a, uh, a riveted assembly <laughs> for want of a better description because I thought it was going to be really difficult to do these rivets which are very close to the floor and the firewall um, in situ uh, but completely uh, forgot that actually the the one that uh, attaches to the Ford Tunnel Z, which is this one here. So this is the floor running across here, and this is the firewall going up there. Um, has to be dimpled um, because it's uh, in the, on the outside of the tunnel. And uh, I have got to put three <laughs> countersink rivets into that bracket through from the inside of the uh, Ford Tunnel Z um, <laughs> uh, which is going to be very difficult. We're going to have to do it basically down the tunnel um, because the floor will be in at that point and uh, <sighs> I should have uh, actually attached that bracket to the Tunnel Z first and then done these ones second. And it might come to that. <laughs> but at the moment, I'm going to think positive and uh, hope that I can uh, wiggle it in there and uh, get it done. So that's that little pile of components there. Next, we've got the uh, seat components. So on the left here, we've got the seat bearers, bearers which go um, basically support the seat from the floor of the Ford fuselage. So the seat goes on top. Um, the various bits have been dimpled, or rather countersunk, and um, the tunnel's been dimpled to fit them. And uh, they're ready to um, rivet 
um, together as little sub assemblies. Uh, then in the center there, we've got the two end seat supports. They end up being riveted onto the side panels and they're ready for that. Then we've got the seat itself, or the seat bottom, let's say. Um, this end is uh, the forward end where the control stick goes. And then the other hole is where the seat belt um, fixings are. And then across the back, you can see a hinge half which is uh, there to attach the seat back to. And that's been drilled out and uh, deburred completely, ready to go. Then we've got the seat back itself, which is here standing up. And that has two hinge halves on it. One hinge half connects to the bottom of the, or the back of the uh, seat base. And the other hinge half connects to the top cross member on the tail cone. And the last part is the um, main seat bearer, which runs across the back of the seat underneath um, and uh, also um, supports the seat belt um, assembly, the centre seat belt assembly as well. And so those are the parts for the seat, all ready to go. And then finally, we've got the firewall, which is stainless steel, and we're looking at the engine side of the uh, firewall and this is the bottom edge and the top edge up there and uh, we've pre-fitted across the front of it the hinge half which will be one of the uh, hinges that secures the bottom cowling engine cowling on and then next to that is the floor itself Ford fuselage floor which has about 420 holes in it um, 424 I think um, they've all been drilled out to the correct sizes for bolts or uh, rivets and also on there are the two uh, gusset plates um, and spacers which are also um, required they go in this area here one goes that side and one the other side and so that's all the uh, the major components that uh, we need in order to build up the Ford fuselage um, so that's what's going to happen next so those are all the bits that uh, go together to make the Ford fuselage and what am I going to do first? First thing I'm going to do is finish off the seat bearers, the four seat bearers. They uh, need to be um, riveted to the um, support angles. Um, I'm going to do it this way around. Uh, the instructions tell you to do it a different way, but as my father always used to say, there is more, or there are more ways than one to skin a cat. I've never tried it myself, but I'll take his word for it. Um, so I'm going to start off with the seat bearers, going to rivet the angles on and then press the two bearings in. Um, there are some little sintered bronze bearings to press into the two centre ones um, for the control stick. Um, it'd be far easier to press them in now than when everything is riveted into the floor so uh, i'm gonna busy away and do that i've got the bits out on the bench ready to go there they are and uh, as i go i will do the next video will be the actual assembly process itself
So I've got a couple of days hopefully to spend on the aircraft this week. So um, I'm hoping that maybe by the end of the week we will have a an assembled Ford fuselage. Wouldn't that be great? Speak to you later.